It is Friday, March 5th. Welcome to Minnesota Sports. TGIF, thank goodness it's Friday. Um, excited to talk a little recruiting again. Another wild story. This one hailing in the SEC. The Tennessee Volunteers got themselves in a little bit of a mess with Torrance Gibson and uh, reached out to Torrance. Probably going to have him on. Going to try to get him on next week to talk about all this stuff because it just needs talked about. No one talks about the wild nature of recruiting in college football. So towards the end of the show, if you stay tuned and stay on, you're going to hear Probably one of the wilder stories uh, in recruiting that I heard in 15 years as a college football coach at the highest level. So uh, excited to talk about it. Make sure <clears throat> before we we play a, a little show intro here, we do that, one, because it's kind of our brand, and two, so that you can leave a comment below. Um, it's, it's all for an algorithm to help us grow, so comment whatever you want. We're going to have a pinned tweet. Answer that tweet for me. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, but enough about that. Let's get to the show. Southeastern Conference, probably the, uh, the obviously, the, they play the best football, right? That's one thing they do do. They also recruit at the highest level. Not always because they're the best recruiters, right? They get away with more. It's just, it means more in the South, right? It hits different in the South. Boosters are a little more friendly in the South. So I'm not even going to get into the shady stuff that schools in the SEC do and schools down South do. That'll come later. I'm going to talk about how they legally put money in these kids' pockets and these coaches' pockets to try to get recruits to come. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Tennessee. Mind you, nothing that I'm going to tell you is illegal. They did nothing wrong. This is not the McDonald's French fries with dollar bills in it. That's illegal. What they did was legal, right? So, And we're going to finish this with an unbelievable story about Torrance Gibson that you're going to really be like, wow, that happened? It's crazy. So first of all, I, I mentioned on the, a previous episode, if you didn't hear it, go listen to it, about how college coaches could pay high school coaches to come up to camp and pay them thousands of dollars to be a guest speaker. I mean, give a little one, two minute speech that was really irrelevant to some, a group of campers and get paid money to bring recruits up. That was legal. What Tennessee did that most schools didn't do, actually uh, Alabama did it, a couple schools did it, was they also had coaches clinics. And they could pay these coaches whatever they wanted, $10,000, $5,000, and pay for their travel, fly them up to Knoxville, spend a good two, three days with these coaches, building relationships, give them a shitload of money, and then also give them gifts. I know Tennessee gave this unbelievable framed like plaque with the coach's name as high school with the block T right there. It was really phenomenal what they were able to do. And it was all legal. And it was awesome. You'd go to uh, some of the prominent high school coaches in South Florida, and in their office, they'd have a huge framed thing from Tennessee. So they were funneling money to these coaches. But never mind that. This story is about Torrance Gibson, right? That's just one way they funneled money. Torrance Gibson went on a tour of the summer, right? Great friend of mine, Mario Perez, was his offensive coordinator, helped him get to some schools because he cared about the kid. He took care of the kid. But then Torrance kind of went rogue on him. So Torrance started going to schools, like I mentioned before, with a street agent that would bring him to Ohio State. He, he, needed, he wanted to go to Tennessee. He wanted to see Tennessee. He knew they were paying well. And uh, so he, he was on Twitter, like, I need to get to Tennessee. Someone help me get to Knoxville. And so Tennessee coaches found a kid that would drive down from Orlando to Miami, pick Torrance up, drive him all the way to Knoxville, and drop him off. A Tennessee fan, right? Highly illegal. So Torrance got to Tennessee, visited there for a couple days, participated in a little summer camp, did all this stuff. Tennessee coaches had a problem. Torrance had no way back to Miami. He was stuck in Knoxville. And so the coaches started freaking out. They told him, you can't just stay here. You have to go home. Well, he had no way to get home. The Tennessee coaches started calling the coaches at American Heritage, asking if someone could pay for Torrance to fly home. They obviously weren't going to shell out $800 for a plane ticket. So Torrance stayed in Knoxville for over a week, like a week and a half, was living in dorms with players, was basically just a resident of Knoxville and visiting Tennessee all the while uh, for over a week, like a week and a half, unprecedented. I've never heard anything like it. And then... Come to find out, he needed a way home. He didn't have one. Well, Tennessee coaches found a way for him to get a plane ticket. You do the math from there. Someone got him a plane ticket from Knoxville, not a big airport, back to Fort Lauderdale, down to South Florida, and he miraculously ended his week-and-a-half-long visit. This is unprecedented. 
One, that they never got in trouble, so much so that Tennessee, after the fact, stopped recruiting him. Despite the fact he was so talented and such a great player, they dropped him completely because they knew if they signed Torrance, all of this would come out. They'd be looking at possible sanctions. So they basically just cut him loose and said, we're not going to recruit him because we don't want to deal with what the hell just happened, that insanity. Several schools did stuff like that. At the end of the day, it was really between Ohio State and Auburn. This kid had everyone in the country, every offer. It came down to Auburn and Ohio State for Torrance Gibson at the end because basically they didn't do anything shady. They didn't kind of, we, we didn't and Auburn didn't buy into his antics and the stuff that was going on with, with his recruiting, not towards his antics, but just kind of the shadiness. And so it came down to two schools. Everyone dropped off of them. Everyone fell off of them. And in one of the wilder stories in recruiting, Torrance ended up as a Buckeye, right? Came to Ohio State. And if you didn't see the episode uh, outlining what happened at Ohio State, what derailed his career, and I talked to Torrance, he's doing really well. He's well-focused. He's actually thankful for what he went through because he knows it made him a stronger person. Now he's just fighting for a shot. So uh, the Spokane, I, I forget their name, Sp the football team in Spokane, he's playing on with Blake Sims. I already told him I'm coming to a game when he plays at Louisville, close by Columbus. So make sure you check him out, follow Torrance, support him as he fights to try to get a second chance at a career that he honestly deserves. So wanted to tell another crazy recruiting story, several more coming. Make sure you hit subscribe. We got uh, live shows, call-in shows every Tuesday, and uh, we're trying to pop it off here on Minutes of Sports. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening, and we will catch you next episode.